Yeah, and it was probably like my best trade and my worst trade in the <laughs> on the same on the same day. Um, I think the decision to trade him in that situation was pretty pretty much based on the fact that, as we alluded to before, I wanted to try to create some sustained success. So I felt like, you know, bringing in like good quality young players into our system after depleting it with a lot of my trades, that we could have more sustained success. It was a mistake. We should have held him. We should have kept on. Uh, we should have kept him in the in the rotation. We ended up signing him back, which was kind of cool. But um, but the reality of it is, I mean, we made a mistake. That was one of the mistakes we made. And and uh, you know, I, I take full responsibility. I do also take full responsibility for getting maybe the best pitcher I've ever seen on a on a baseball field in Roy Halladay. And um, he did not disappoint, man. I mean, he was just spectacular. He was sort of my white whale, and he was the guy that I wanted from the time that I became a GM. In fact, I went into David Montgomery's office one day and said, hey, man, this is my guy. I'm going to go get him if he's ever available, and I got him. And uh, it ended up, uh, you know, being kind of a uh, infamous type of a trade because we ended up moving Cliff Lee in, in the same sort of, uh, you know, same sort of uh, three-way. But um, – Sometimes you make mistakes, but uh, but I I will not uh, I will not change the fact that we ended up getting Roy Halladay out of the deal, and that was really important to us. Was there a chance that you could have kept Cliff and still gotten Doc, or was there like stipulations like, uh, you know, if we don't if we don't shed this, we have to rebuild with this, and we have to get Doc? You know, it wasn't a contingency uh, trade, but we felt like. Um, and we, it wasn't really a money issue. It was more of a talent issue. And we felt like, um, we weren't sure we're going to be able to, um, sign Cliff back. And we felt like if we acquired Roy in that acquisition, we would have to sign him long-term and we got that done. And once we got that done, then it sort of set the wheels in motion again. I mean, I think it was a mistake and, uh, and it would have been great to keep him. We did get him back the following year, but um, but we probably should have kept him. Simple but Cliff, that. Cliff, getting to know Cliff, becoming a friend with Cliff, he wanted to stay, and I know oh, he yeah. had he had some animosity towards that towards that decision. He wanted him and his wife wanted to stay. Jackson was going through such awesome treatment, which ultimately you know he's able to come back and you know use the the hospital and, and helped him sign back. How is that? It's such a crazy dynamic to me because as a player, I was sitting there like, I'm talking to Cliff. He's a teammate. You're essentially my boss. And I'm sitting there going, wait, wait, you were pissed at Ruben because he traded you? You signed back here? Like, how how was that for you? Did you have to, like, come – not not that you, like, had your tail between your legs, but did you have to come and say, hey, this is what happened? And, you know, what, what was that situation? Yeah, it was a very dicey uh, situation because we had so many different factors working against us for that Cliff Lee trade, uh, for that Cliff Lee signing. Um, one of them was the Yankees. The biggest one was the Yankees because, it, uh, honestly, there was no way that the Phillies uh, in, at that time were going to be able to, like, battle the Yankees in a in a war to try to sign Cliff Lee. I mean, the Yankees could have said, okay, here's $250 million, and we would have been out. And so um, we had to stay really, really stealth and quiet about it. Um, but we talked about it. I mean, he knew how important he was to us. He knew, um, you know, I had to have, the, you know, some tough conversations with he and his wife about, you know, um, hey, I didn't, I didn't, you know, we, we didn't ever want to leave, you know, don't, don't break our hearts again and that kind of stuff. And I, I said, listen, the only way we'd be able to get this done if we keep it as quiet as possible, and we did keep it quiet enough to be able to get the deal done. And that was, that was one of the most coolest things that, um, because in this day and age, man, everything leaks. I mean, everything leaks. It doesn't matter how quiet you can be. Um, other than maybe the Atlanta Braves pulling out of Atlanta and going, uh, you know, <laughs> to the battery, um, <laughs> that doesn't, you know, that was pretty stealth, pretty good job by John Sherholtz, but, um, it just doesn't happen that way, and it did. It worked out in an amazing fashion, and we got to get to have him, you know, got to have him back. 
fans often will go, oh, let's trade this guy and then we'll get him back next year. You know, like if they're not doing well, there's, there's humans um, that are involved. You know, like John Lester gets dealt. He's, he's not going back. Um, and most guys are usually offended if they've been with the team for a while. And, and this ties at least partially to ownership because you got to get permission to spend. But when we're yeah, seeing it right now, Marcus Stroman wants to stay with the Cubs. He is on the record. Now, the Cubs are like, you have a contract. Go for it. Just stay in there. He's like, no, I have an opt-out. And obviously, a, any human being would take that. So pay me what I deserve. And I don't know the whole story. Obviously, no one totally does. But that's going on right now. If the Cubs you know, fall back, they trade him. I don't think Marcus Stroman's going to be like, sure, first phone call. Yeah, let's talk. Let's. Like, he's probably going to say, pay me more now. You had me in your hands. You know, it's funny. I have a different. Uh, I had a different view about opt outs. I would never want to give an opt out when I was a GM. And now, in in retrospect, I think now, you know what? Why not give the guy an opt out? He's going to have to bust his ass and play his rear end off. And that's exactly what you want out of your player, right? It's almost like a guy who's playing for in his last year of a contract. All of a sudden, you know, may have a year or two, or he's not as good, and then all of a sudden, boom, guy goes nuts. Um. I don't mind having opt-outs in, in, in deals anymore because I don't mind paying guys who perform because I think that that was an important part of like, like if you perform, you should be paid for performance. Um, I think you have to be intelligent about it. But um, in, in that situation, I mean, the Cubs are probably going to say, Hey, finish off the season, be healthy and we'll come back at you and try to sign your ass. I mean, I would think that that would be the process, but who knows? I mean, that's uh, that's for the Chicago Cubs to deal with. Um, but there was a time when I thought to myself, why would you ever give an opt-out you know, to a player? Now I'm thinking in this day and age, i got no problem with opt-outs because the guy's going to have to pitch or play um, to a certain level that, uh, that if he plays well enough, I mean, first of all, you get, you get the production out of the guy, right? Um, and if he plays well enough, maybe, you know, Okay, maybe you have to pay him more, but that's okay. If that's if that's a going rate, and then we'll kind of go from there. Keep him motivated. Keep the yeah. keep the carrot keep the carrot dangling a little bit. That's exactly right. Not not every not everybody has a different sort of carrot, as you well know, Grazzi. And um, some guys are very self motivated, and some guys are not. And that's the reality. They're everybody's different. They're all, they're all different humans. Somebody might be motivated by wanting to stay in a certain city. Somebody might be motivated by, you know, wanting to, you know, do the best for their family or whatever the case may be, but, uh, or their own pride, or they're just great competitors. Um, but everybody's different. And I think that's one of those things that you sort of have to sort of assess and find out about the player. And that's part of doing your evaluation on the player's uh, makeup. 